check out this project that we're doing here in Benbrook, Texas. But I'm gonna be talking about an engineered foundation. When do you need an engineered foundation? When do I recommend an engineered foundation? So that's what makes an engineered foundation a lot more pricier than just a normal slab. What is going on, Pac? So I'm a little unprepared today, but I just came uh, unexpectedly to check out this project that we're doing here in Benbrook, Texas. Man, it's already 9.30 in the morning. It's already 80, 90 degrees. It's around 90. But I'm gonna be talking about an engineered foundation from weld plates, how the engineer normally will require an engineered foundation. What is the difference between an engineered foundation and just a normal slab? So stay tuned with me while the action's going on in the back, I'll be talking. So let's get this video started. So this is a 30 wide, 50 foot long metal building. This is gonna be used as a laboratory and the pipes you see there, kind of like PVC pipe for electrical. So because there's not gonna be a lot of walls, they're wanting to run all the electrical under the slab or through the slab, you can see there. We had to work with the electrical contractor you know, to coordinate and be able to uh, come in and, and run their, their pipes. That took them about two days. We had to kind of stop on the rebar for the slab for them to come in and do their pipes. You can see here, we got a box. So right here is where, for example, this is where the weld plate's gonna sit. When it's set the weld plate here, this is where an I beam's gonna go. And for that matter, an engineered foundation slab will require a bigger box wherever you're gonna have the columns come in. So we got one here, three by three, three by three. So that's what makes an engineered foundation a lot more pricier than just a normal slab. Now you might be asking yourself, when do you need an engineered foundation? An engineered foundation, you'll need it whenever you need permits. So if you don't need permits, then you don't need an engineered foundation. Now, when do I recommend an engineered foundation? I recommend it when you have a residential building where you're gonna be living. Definitely recommend an engineer foundation. Usually the steps is the engineer comes in, extracts a piece of your ground to be able to create a soil report to determine the capacities of your existing soil. We also determine if there was any existing slabs that were removed, trees nearby, how much off level there is to determine how we're gonna engineer this foundation. And then, that's why I recommend it for residential because you never know, it's all based on your ground, it's all based on your location. From here in Benbrook, all the way out to Dallas, there's just different soils. Heading down to San Antonio, we got different types of, of soil. So if it's a residential home, I recommend to get an engineered foundation. If it's a commercial building, definitely, definitely get an engineered foundation. Especially industrial and warehouse, yeah, that should all be engineered. Now, you might be asking, well, why don't everybody build like like an in, like how engineers require? Well, engineers do build slabs very differently. One engineer might require it differently than the other. We really like the engineer we work with. I hear they're local out of Dallas for work. We really like them. It's really, I, I think it's a lot more reinforced and it's really needed for such a building, but they, they know their math, they know what they're doing. But sometimes when you're getting quotes, you're gonna get a normal slab. Just certain uh, footings, maybe 12 by 12. This one has 24 inch footing, so it's going down 24 inches deep. By the way, the beams, the footings are the ones that we're, we're filling in right now. That's something to keep in mind, is that an engineer foundation will cost more. It's, it's a lot more thicker rebar. I mean, these are all number fives. Most uh, contractors in general, we do number four for your footings. With requirements of uh, stirrups every 24 inches. I want you to uh, take a look at this. 
if you see this it's wet underneath the vapor barrier so that's the reason why you need a vapor barrier whenever you're doing a slab is because if you don't have this moisture can tend to go up inside your building you can have condensation inside your metal building and wonder how how am i getting condensation it's coming from the ground if you don't have a vapor barrier now the vapor barrier also helps in the sense of like you have a crack inside your lab which will happen then you can get some vegetation like uh, grass kind of coming out if you've ever seen it in just normal sidewalks they don't put any vapor barrier then uh, wherever you have cracks um, or control joints then you can start seeing after a couple of years some grass coming out we're pouring right now Got our little chairs. Rebar should not be touching the ground. That's why you got the little blocks in there. The rebar should not be touching the ground. If it touches the ground, it's no good. It will rust out faster. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on engineered slabs, we do those, we pull permits, we get engineered foundations, we get engineered buildings. So if you need more of those type of services, which are kind of special in Texas because you don't really need engineered foundations, engineered buildings all the time. So not like I used to work in Michigan, almost every building, no matter what, needed to be engineered and with the permit. So Texas, kind of beauty, still kind of the Wild West. But if you do need that service, we do that, it's our specialty. We get all everything, get permits. We actually already passed inspections for this engineered foundation through our engineer yesterday. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.